It's the calm before the storm. <laughs> How's everyone doing today, guys? My name is Steve Owens, and this is Falcon and Winter Soldier, Episode 5, Truth. Yeah, there's a lot. That's not a, that's not a, it's not a false title. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, this is pretty much the calm before the storm, and, and I'm a little bit surprised at how we went from such a WTF moment in the last episode to now we're getting ready for the final fight. I mean, I, that's what we expected, but just in between that was pretty interesting because the opening, yeah, it's like, besides the opening, that's pretty much it. Like, in terms of action in this mo in this episode. Like, I mean, there's a few moments in the episode where they're trained, where, like, Sam's training and that, and it's cool to see him see action there. But overall, the biggest action sequence in this open, in this episode is the opening fight between Sam, Bucky, versus John Walker. And it is an interesting fight, and, and dare I say an emotional one? Um... Because one one of the main things, obviously, from this was, you see, I le again, this kind of is looking at Walker's character because he hides out in this warehouse, and you see the you see like the the pain and the guilt that he has in the moment, like he, you know, he he feels like he 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 knows what he did, but he lost his friend and it's like he's really really conflicted by it but then he after taking some time in the moment um, um he 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 then basically uh, he basically picks his path because he's like in the moment he's like i could take responsibility i could make i i, I got angry in the moment i lost someone i I can do something about it, but no, in the moment he's like, yeah, I lost somebody, and I'm convincing myself that killing that dude was the right thing, like, and of course he spins it like it was a lie, because he, he, you clearly know who it was that killed him, that killed his partner, but he has to spin it like, no, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't Carly, it was one of her, it was the guy I killed, he killed my part, he killed my friend, and thus I avenge him, and it's like, <clears throat> not exactly a good way to do it but um yeah so after he basically confirmed he basically can tells himself yeah what you did was right sam and bucky come in and then we have our big fight of the episode which yeah i'll admit in terms of action there wasn't there was a few moments where i'm like okay that's crazy but I think we can all agree that this is basically mirroring the Bucky Steve versus Iron Man fight in Civil War because you know you have you have them fighting you have Bucky and, you have two Bucky fighting with someone over someone else over something that they don't believe in and it's like we well, have to you have <laughs> literally I mean come down to the fact that Walker breaks his arm and like someone's someone someone something gets ripped apart like in civil war it was bucky's hand that literally got disintegrated off him and then in this it's sam with his wings with he like walker literally rips him off and it's like that's pretty okay so yeah i mean in terms of the fight i mean i like how no when it's when it's finally said and done no one really is standing like I mean, we know who won the fight, but in terms of who's the last man standing, they're all pretty much down. <laughs> and, it, yeah, you just feel the emotion because this entire fight is not even them trying to stop Walker. It's just them trying to get the shield back because, obviously, the shield is the more important piece in this moment because that shield represents a lot and the fact that it was just recently used as a murder weapon <laughs> is rather intense and the fact that walker almost did the exact same thing to sam in the moment like he was he he was getting ready to decapitate him as well but then bucky came in and saved him at the last second but man 
So after all that, after all that, Bucky goes, Bucky goes to find Zemo, while Sam, uh, after, so Sam, to start, he leaves his wings with Torres, so, uh, maybe that's a hint that Torres will become the next Falcon. He then goes to Isaiah, he actually, he and Isaiah talk a bit, because he want because Sam wants to understand you know, like, why? Like, what exactly happened? Why did Isaiah Bradley, who could have been a Captain America, didn't become a Captain America? And so Bradley gives us the story on what exactly happened, and it turns out pretty much what happened in Captain America, the first Avenger. It's some, it's, there was a group of men in Vietnam who were captured, and Isaiah went up against, went against orders and went and rescued them successfully he successfully rescued them but the but they're obvious but the main difference is for isaiah these were men that were like him in turn because this was his team they were all given a certain a certain serum like they 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 didn't even get they, um they said they were it was all a different serum but they all said it was for a tetanus shot <laughs> that's not about that but um, Isaiah said he, he he told so he said that unfortunately when it came to the actual serum he was the only one to survive it. So apparently all his men died, and that kind of showed. And in the moment you think like in, looking back on it now it's like so he basically rescued these men for nothing because when he rescued them he gets arrested, locked in jail. They tell his wife that he died. His men then die. So it's like, yeah, and he pretty much loses everything. It's like, wow. That is, wow, that's pretty messed up. And also, of course, the other thing, in fact, is the government was going to bomb the the play, the camp that the that his men were high that his men were captured into, bury the evidence, as he put it. So of course he. Pretty much, like, whereas Captain America did, whereas Steve, one, he pretty much didn't have any military, I mean, besides being a sponsor of the military, he, and he was a cadet, he did, he, 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 he did go up against, he did go up against orders, but he did save, what was it, like, 4,000 lives, 40,000 lives, like, he saved a lot of men, saved a lot of men, took over destroyed gained some territory in the in the war and he was and he and he was praised as a hero whereas this it, i mean these were just men that he rescued this it was bradley saving his friend his people his team who were going to be killed by either side because they have what they were capable of so yeah so and Pretty much Bradley says it in this episode, no black man will ever become Captain America because that's not how the world works. That's not how this world works. And it's like, yeah, I mean, I mean, the first four episodes, there were those hints of racism, but it's, this is the first episode that actually like he says black people, like black man, black people, like, I mean, maybe, maybe they said it in the first four episodes and I missed it, but this was the first episode where they actually said it and it stuck with me because it's like, yeah. I mean, even Bucky says it in this episode. He's like, he realizes he like, so after Sam gets to talk with Isaiah, he goes back to his home where pretty much most of the episode is spent with him fixing the family boat. He's bonding with his sister. He gets people of the town to help him fix the boat. Bucky even shows up because... Oh, that scene with Bucky. <laughs> so, Bucky um, goes and finds Zemo, who was at his, at the memorial that he mentioned in episode 3. And so, Zemo is there. He's looking up at his family. And Bucky shows up. And Zemo... <laughs> it's interesting because Zemo... You think, you really, you constantly guess, you're constantly trying to guess what Zemo is going to do in each episode. Because you, on one hand, he could, he could easily slip away, as he proved in the last episode. He can easily slip away 
and and you think, okay, now he's on the loose. What's he gonna do? In this episode, he he does well. He does one thing that I agree. I I understand why he did. He went he went to the memorial of his family. That was obviously something that he wanted to he he wanted to see before he got captured because. Bucky shows up and they have a talk and Zemo's like, I've decided not to kill you. <laughs> and Bucky's like, wow, okay. So then Bucky, Bucky then he does this thing with the gun. So he, he, he whipped out his gun. He aims it at Zemo's head. He, and then there's this moment of like silence before Bucky pulls the trigger, but it turns out the bullets are empty. And then he, in his left hand, he drops all the bullets in his hand. And then once he does that, the... Uh, I keep forgetting the name. Uh, the Wakandan guards, they show up. The Wakandan guards show up. And they take Zemo away. And apparently they're going to put him in the raft. So uh, they're not taking him back to Wakanda. They're putting him in the raft. We'll see how that goes. Um, And that's the end of Zemo, I guess. I... I mean, if that's how they end it with Zemo, like we don't see him in the next episode, unless it's an end credit scene... It's gonna be interesting. That's gonna be interesting. Cause Yeah, it's weird. It's weird now that Zemo's captured again. I mean, I thought it was gonna go I thought they were gonna I thought they were literally gonna go down the silence of the lambs route where Zemo gets away and they don't know where he is, and you kinda have to question where that'll go. So in this, Zemo is locked back up. But it seems like I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. Who knows? So, all, so after all that's done, um, Sam, or Bucky visits Sam in his home, and they fix the boat up as well. They work together to fix up the boat. They also train with Cap Shield, and Sam, and Bucky even tells Sam that he's sorry forever for g basically hating him for giving up the shield because he said. He said, "I only focused on I only focused on the fact that Steve gave you the shield. I never thought about a black. I thought I never thought about you being black. You know, you being a black man having that shield, being Captain America is like a black man being Captain America. So basically, there's a they do say black people a lot in this. It kind of I don't know. It kind of it kind of catches me off guard when they say it, because when I hear it in a sh anytime I hear it, I, I the reason why I." I when I think of race, when I think of saying, like, white people, black people, I just, I feel uncomfortable saying it because, you know, I mean, why should, why should, why do we have to identify people like that? In my mind, you know, it's like, I see someone and I'm like, that's a person, like, that's someone, that's a person, that's, like, man, woman, I mean, I can go, I could, I could describe them, but in all honesty, I want to know them. I don't want to look at them and automatically confirm who they are. You know, that's, for me, that's how I see it. I don't, so when I hear people, you know, say black, black, black people, white people, Asians, uh, Hispanics, freaking, you know, like when we go into the, when we go into that, it feels, it, I don't know how to feel about it. So, but again, in this case, it's understandable as to why they have to acknowledge it because unfortunately that's the world you know there are people in this world who define people by that by how by the color of their skin by their ethnicity their culture all that so yeah but for me then you know that, that's yeah so bucky pretty bucky and sam seemingly make amends with everything i guess and bucky goes off on his own but he does leave Sam a gift from Wakanda, and I hate the fact that they have this. They end the episode with him opening up the case, but we don't see what's in the case. That pissed me off. I was like, give us a tease at least of what it is before we, you go into the next episode him with him wearing whatever it is. My guess is it's a combination of Captain America suit with Falcon wings. That's my guess. Because then it would, and here, and here's how I would see it. It is a Captain America suit, you got the falcon wings, but you're able to have the shield on the back. Because honestly, that would probably be the best way to do it. Just saying. 
Okay, so, um, uh, what else happened in this episode? Oh, yeah, um, so after Walker got beat by Sam and Bucky, he got, and pretty much, he nearly got, he pretty much got court-martialed. Like, I mean, they, he didn't get court-martialed, but he was, he was stripped of his title in Captain America. He was told he could no longer do any missions for the government, and he also, he was also stripped of all his benefits. That last part, I'm like, okay, yeah, because... Yeah, so, and of course, Walker, Walker, he snaps at them, and he says, like, I did everything you told me to do, you made me this. He's like, this is, you, be, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for you, basically, and it's like, now this is how you, this is how you repay me. But, of course, it's the fact that he kind of did go a step too far when he killed, when he killed the dude, when he killed that dude because he killed Lamar. So, yeah, and then. There's this mysterious lady that um, shows up, I think. She calls herself this long name, and then she's like, you can call me Val. But, you know, don't call me Val. It's like, um, from what I've heard, she is a Russian. She's something to do with the Russians, but also S.H.I.E.L.D., so I'm kind of intrigued to see where that goes, because at first I thought, oh, this has to be Power Broker, right? But then... I'm like, wait, why would Power Broker show up to talk to him? Like, so, and then we have a short conversation with um, Sharon, or, like, we have a short scene with Sharon, who's having a conversation with Baltrax the, Baltrax the Leaper. <laughs> so, apparently, she broke him out of prison to have him work with Carly. So, I'm wondering how that's going to come into play, because Carly is in New York because the there's the there is going to be this conference and debate and like holding of whether of how the net what the government is going to do with all the refugees and so Carly and so pretty much that means Carly and the Spy Specters are going to attack. So Sam and Bucky, they they find out they find out it's going to take pretty much the final battle. In my opinion, is going to take place in New York. So Sam is getting suited. Is like I said, the episode ends with Sam opening up the Wakanda case, and we don't see what kind of get what kind of suit he gets. But if, I have a feeling he's going to show. He's obviously going to show up and fight. Take to help Carly or take, try and and Carly and the Flying Smashers. Bucky will probably show up as well to help. And with how the episode ends, there's also the John Walker who ends the episode with an end credit scene, or mid credit scene, I should say, or end credit, end credit, mid credit. He ends it with him working and building his new, his own shield. So obviously he, because he was told by this mysterious lady that the government doesn't own Cap Shield. So it's like he who knows what he's gonna do. My guess is because I when I saw the fight between Sam Bucky and John Walker, I didn't feel like this was for the title of Captain America finally being stripped. I saw it more as Sam and Bucky taking down Walker to get the shield back. And I think they knew that as well i think they knew that they wanted i mean sam and bucky team up fight against john walker that was inevitable but when it really comes down to who's going to become the next captain america because especially about how that fight ended with john nearly killing sam and even saying i am captain america to him i think the final episode is going to have a big battle between sam and uh sam and walker and that one is going to truly make the difference between who's really Captain America and who's not. Because knowing Sam, he's going to... I'm guessing Sam is going to... He's going to beat Walker, but he's going to be... He's going to show him the respect. He's going to he's gonna spare his life. I can't see him killing him. Because if he does, then that wouldn't be what Steve wanted. And knowing Captain... And Sam, knowing what he has to do, what he has been in this episode, because... Some of the conversations that he has with 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 people, especially in this episode, I really felt like it was just sounding like Steve Rogers. I really felt like it. So I'm glad to see that he's grown to be 
Captain America, and I'm really glad we got this series because, you know, when they ended Endgame with him becoming the next Captain America, you know, a lot of people were like, is he gonna really, well, well, does he deserve it? And then, I, so I'm glad this series not only shows that he himself is coming to terms with becoming the new Captain America, but we also see why he's worthy, why he, Steve decided to give him the shield in the first place. Because Sam has been through a lot. He has, he grew, he grew up in, he grew up in a place where you, where racism isn't exactly, racism, uh, he grew up, you know, he grew up in an interesting, he grew up in an interesting part of the country. He became a soldier. He lost, he's lost people. He also, he also ran this support group where you know, of the other people who lost their friends or lost their partners and stuff in war so he he knew he knew he knows the pain he shares the pain he knows how to empathize with them he so and of course that's kind of the very one of the very first things that steve sees him doing like i mean obviously everyone remembers the on your left bit but remember the second scene that they have together is them is him going to that hall and seeing sam there and it's like yeah so yeah it's kind of crazy but that's how it is so all right one episode to go <laughs> it's gonna be an interesting one i know that so thank you all for watching this um and we'll see you in the next one